For a long time, newspapers were the main distributors of the latest news. With stories about mayhem, murder, science and lottery winners, they served a wide audience. However, the empire of the printed press has started to crumble. As modern people like to consume their latest news digitally and in a compressed form, RSS feeds fulfill that modern need. This video demonstrates that a 30-year-old printer combined with an ESP8266 is perfectly suited for printing the latest news. And that old doesn't always mean obsolete. In retro computing circles, printers do not get much attention. In many cases they are carelessly discarded or disassembled for their parts. But fortunately, some printers manage to escape this gruesome fate by hiding in a corner of the garage or storage box. Unfortunately, this resulted in some serious damage and might prevent them from ever being used again. Other printers might have been more lucky and can be found in the corner of an attic. But it were the boldest and smartest printers that survived by hiding in plain sight. For this project, we just need a practical and working printer. So let's start with the smallest one, which seems to be just perfect. This is the Citizen DP560 CD. It is the cutest little printer capable of printing on ordinary paper. It weighs only 2 kilograms, uses plain paper cash register rolls, and can print up to 40 characters on a single line. The printing mechanism support the use of a two-color ink ribbon, meaning that this printer can print in two colors. Installing the ink ribbon isn't that difficult, but does require some attention. This printer appears to be in excellent working condition, but there is only one tiny little problem. And that is that the print it delivers is just too small to read, for most people above 40. In many cases, bigger is better, so this printer seems to be just perfect. This is the Commodore MPS 1230. It is the prettiest printer in the box and can print on ordinary sheets of A4 paper. It weighs 4.2 kilograms and can print up to 240 characters on a single line. The printing mechanism uses a very clean and convenient ink ribbon cartridge system, which only supports printing in one color. But printing on single sheets of paper isn't very practical for our application. Luckily this printer can be converted to use continuous form paper or paper that uses a tractor feed mechanism. At first, this printer appears to be in perfect working condition. But there does seem to be one tiny little problem, which shows itself after a few pages of printing. The ink ribbon no longer contains any usable ink, resulting in a very faint impression of the printed text, making it almost impossible to read. 
finding a new ink ribbon is difficult, and re-inking the existing ribbon is a project for another day. With only one printer left in the box, that one has to be it. And according to its specifications, this printer seems to be just perfect. This is the Brother HR5C. It is pretty small for something capable of printing to sheets of A4 paper, and weighing only 1.6 kilograms, it is pretty light too. It can print up to 80 characters on a single line. Printing of ordinary paper requires the use of a special thermal transfer ribbon, because this printer is a thermal printer. Making it much less noisy than the much more common impact printer. Unfortunately these thermal transfer ribbons are hard to come by these days. And old ribbons cannot be re-inked or reused. Also keep in mind that you should not print anything secret using thermal transfer technology. Because the transfer ribbon itself becomes the perfect log of whatever has been printed with it. Reading printed text is very easy, and it doesn't even require any special tools or skills. Reconstructing previously printed images does require a bit more effort and some patience. The reward for this intense piece of cut and paste labor will be the reconstructed image of something that has been printed many decades ago. An image that might even be classified as top secret. Unfortunately, it's just a silly clip art style picture. But it was a nice exercise that would perfectly fit an exciting spy movie. Fortunately this printer is also capable of directly printing to thermal paper. Paper that is used by modern cash registers, label printers or the older fax machines. It is a relatively cheap kind of paper that is still widely available today. So, with the printing problem solved, there now is a usable printer for the project. One that's relatively silent, small, and pretty cheap to use. Although printing on thermal paper is frowned upon by many, we've got to be realistic here. Being able to use a printer that's three decades old without any special tools, tricks or effort, is a nice achievement. Connecting a modern microcontroller to a 1980s printer could require a lot of I.O. pins. Fortunately, there is an interface that may be perfectly suited for this task. Long before USB was invented, Commodore created a universal serial bus that allowed all sorts of peripherals to be connected. This universal serial bus was referred to as serial. The purpose of this serial system was to replace the expensive IEEE-488 interface, also known as GPIB. Commodore chose to use a six-wire cable and a commonly available connector. A connector that is still widely available today. By sending the data over a six-wire cable, instead of 24, a significant cost saving could be achieved. Unfortunately, things went wrong in various places resulting in a bus with a painfully slow data transfer speed. Although this wasn't a problem for the VIC-20, for which the bus was designed, it did become a big problem for the C64. Although some third-party products claimed to solve the problem. Although a huge improvement, it was a solution not every user was able to afford. If you have a printer with a Commodore serial interface, then you require only 4 or 5 I.O. pins to control such a device. The slow speed of the serial interface is not an issue for a printer. The universal serial bus of Commodore sounds a bit like the modern USB, but let's be honest, you cannot compare these two interfaces. 
For instance the connector Commodore used may have been cheap, it still is very well constructed and easy to insert. It doesn't wiggle. And it has a respectable holding force. It does not require hubs because every device allows for connecting another device. You can daisy chain many devices this way, but most people never got any further than connecting a single disk drive and a printer. The circuit itself is very easy to build. Use a piece of experimenter's PCB and some components, and then just throw out of work at all. And that's how you make the circuit. The firmware that needs to be programmed into the ESP8266 is a bit more interesting. Because it needs to decode the information extracted from the internet. All we really need is a headline and some content, not more than one or two lines of text each. Fortunately, various news-related websites already offer their data in a pre-processed form, called RSS feeds. But, this doesn't mean that we don't require any processing. Because the RSS file contains way too much information to be sent directly to the printer. And the fact that the RSS format exists in various versions doesn't really help. But as long as we process the data wisely this should not be a problem. RSS data is basically an XML file, a human-readable format, where the data is sandwiched between special labels. So basically, we can ignore most of the document. Because we only need to print the information that is surrounded by the label's name, title, description and publication date. After removal of possible control codes, we are ready to send the information to the printer. The system is set up to refresh every 30 minutes. By using a checksum for each printed item, printing multiple copies of the same item can be prevented. When the RSS file contains new, non-printed information, it will be automatically printed. The printed paper will curl up into a new roll, keeping everything nice and tidy. As long as the printer has enough paper, it requires no maintenance at all. Although this little printer, which hasn't been considered to be the latest news for almost three decades, sure can print the latest news for many decades to come. <laughs>